Gone Home. I love games that take a different approach to a narrative story. Like for a good example of that is one of my favorite types of these games is the Stanley Parable. It rewards exploration and playing the game your own way. In that kind of way, this title has more free roaming though. But I still want to say it's a walking simulator. All you do is walk around the mansion clicking on things and picking things up. Looking at the way the game is being played right now on the screen, I wouldn't fault you for thinking this was a haunted house simulator. It's an empty house that feels creepy with occasional thunder in the background. And and throughout it there's a sense of dread and worry that someone's gonna jump out at you at any point. However, you will quickly realize it won't happen. It's just set in a spooky atmosphere because, well, actually I don't know. The story would have the same effect if it was in the middle of a sunny day. You're playing as a woman who has come back to her family home to find it empty, with only a letter from her sister telling her not to come look for her or figure out why she left. So of course you instantly disrespect her letter and spend the rest of the game piecing together what happened in the home to make it empty. Seriously! What if they actually made an ending where you could just put your bags down, go to your bedroom, and go to sleep? It would pop up with an achievement like, respect your sister's wishes ending. There actually is no achievement, so because there is only one ending as far as I can tell. As you are searching through the house, you're going to find a lot of pointless items that you can manipulate, which is a real problem. You can open drawers and pick up random things. It won't advance the story, and I guess it's there to make the real items not stand out so much. That will move the story forward. At the end of this very short game, I had opened up every drawer, oven, door, anything I could have thought I could interact with. I was sure there had to be some purpose, but there really wasn't. The way the house looked at the end with everything thrown everywhere, with all the drawers open, looked like I was playing Thief Simulator and I just robbed the house. I do have to say the size of this house is ridiculous. They do make references to the house being famous in letters and voiceovers, but why would a family of four ever move into a house this huge? There's an unfinished basement that's large as well. It's crazy how much room they have. Anyway, like I said, you have to explore the house for clues. These clues were mostly easy to find once you figured out to ignore most of the objects in the game. You'll know when you hit an important clue because you had a voiceover of what her sister's been doing. All these clues and stories come together and it'll make sense at the end of this game. It was nice piecing everything Everything together. The house is mostly open. There are some secret places to go, as well as a couple locked off places. I was really worried that I was missing something. That is the main reason I checked every drawer, because I didn't want to have to recheck this huge house just to try and get the ending of this game. However, to my surprise, I think the way the game is laid out made it easy to figure out the next parts of the story. It was really well made to keep me on track without actually seeming like they're guiding me. It's one of the hardest things that a game like this could do. Freedom to explore with goals that you're going to kind of do anyway. So you're constantly finding new areas to explore since the game is set up so well. There's a lot of extra stuff to find, like letters that will flesh out what's been happening to your sister and her parents as well. There was actually a problem with all the letters you find and stuff, and that was that some of this stuff was in cursive. And cursive is very hard to read. But after a while, I kind of gave up on trying to read it, as it was just too difficult. This is a very short game. It'll take you about two hours to beat. And that's if you take your time and look in every nook and cranny. There is a director's commentary as well, and I listened to it all. It was done better than Firewatch, which has a similar way of doing it. Which is kind of like boxes of things you can click on when you get into a room. But in Firewatch's defense, I didn't want to have to replay the whole game to listen to it. You could easily move around this house to pick the parts you were interested in. There's also an option to have the lights always on, opening all the doors and turning off the map so it can make your playthrough even easier or maybe even a little harder. Gone Home has a good story in a somewhat creepy environment. It has all the beats of a horror game only with no horror. You will wonder why the house is deserted and the natural curiosity to find out why. I like this game a lot but what I didn't like was the $14.99 price tag. That is way too much for a game that is only two hours long but it is definitely worth playing so you should definitely get this on sale. I'd say for under five dollars. In the end it's a fairly quick game with very little replay Playability. I do think it's a title people will enjoy while playing it, but you need to buy it when it's on sale.